Hey guys, Adrian here with you for another video. In this video, I'm going to share with you some tips and tricks. I'm going to show you my tool belt. I'm going to show you some of the tools I like to use. Um, some neat tools you probably haven't seen before. They're very unique to framing. And I'm going to do a quick three or four minute product uh, review on this new DeWalt compact miter saw station that I've recently purchased off Amazon. So first off, let's start off with a few tips, tricks. Um, I'm going to show you one of the things that I believe will save you as either a worker or a business owner a lot of time and energy. And if you focus in here, you'll notice what I'm talking about. This is, of course, the framing checklist, right? Not all guys like to do this, but I just figure it keeps me more organized and it ensures that nothing gets uh, missed on a house. So there you have the basement, working your way up to first, second floor walls. And of course, we end up the roof. Now, when I'm doing my cleanup work, I like to work from the roof down for obvious reasons. One, of course, being point loads. But, uh, yeah, so I recommend making a checklist. You can either copy this, and uh, if you want, I can send you a link for this list. So you can just uh, print it off on your computer at home. Um, pretty generic stuff here. Um, if you look, you'll see that it's a lot of uh, wash, rinse, repeat kind of point loads, hangers. But uh, it's basically a mental checklist that you basically just go one by one and it forces you to that basically nothing gets overlooked. So... I believe in this. I believe this makes me a better carpenter. It makes my guys more efficient and uh, it increases accountability. And I do this for each and every house or build that I'm a part of. Um, another thing, I'll show you my pouch. This is the pouch I use every day. Now this pouch is the AWP basic framing pouch. And uh, I've been using this one for about two or three weeks now, and I absolutely love it. I bought this one in the past, and uh, I went away from it for a while to go with a bigger pouch, the bigger bags on the side, and I just really like the idea of being compact, and um, this accomplishes that because... It still does all the things that I need. I can fit a roll of two and a quarters in here easily without damaging them. Um, and this is an awesome pouch. You get this at Lowe's. In Canada, I think it's about 64 bucks, some, somewhere in that range. So it's fairly cheap. And uh, at first, I was very skeptical of these... Uh, the leather uh, hammer buckles instead of metal but uh, my last pouch my last AWP pouch being this model lasted me over a year and uh, any tool that lasts me over a year I consider to be a good tool so let's go over what's inside I always have gloves on always wear gloves these are cheap gloves no sense buying really good grip gloves because you're just gonna get wrecked. So you can spend three bucks a Dollarama or you can go to Mark's Work Warehouse and spend 25 bucks. It's your choice. They're gonna last the exact same amount of time. It's common sense here. Um, nowadays, we have to wear face protection when we're in and around other crews or helping lift walls or talking to the foreman. So that's what that's all about. This is also really good. So if you're cutting drywall, I cut drywall with a skill saw. If 
if I'm just doing like semis or townhouses. Um, unless I just need one sheet, then I just cut it with the knife and... But, uh, okay, so moving on. Got the Lufkin chalk line here. I really like this uh, chalk line because it puts out a nice, thin, clear line. Now, I'm showing you the part that I really don't like, and it's, it more affects you when you are wearing gloves and you're, lit, and you're chalking the floors. Over and over again, you're forced to dig in here, dig in here, and get it. And sometimes you actually get your pencil and scoop out this uh, the hook. So that becomes a, a bit of a pain. Um, after a while, the trade-off being the line it puts out is beautiful and it actually holds a lot of chalk. So uh, I think I got that at Lowe's. But uh, I usually use this one and my uh, Tajima. And I find they put out really good lines. Always use Fat Max tapes. Fat Max DeWalt, the same brand. It's all Black & Decker. And uh, I don't know, it's what I've always used, it's what I'm most comfortable with. So I've, I'm a strong believer that if you use tools that you're comfortable with, you'll be more productive. Olfa, Olfa knife, nice and sharp, big blades, 25 millimeter. Uh, I want to show you something that I made that is unique about this pouch. You see my speed square here. And I think you'll notice, how is it just hanging there? Well, what I did, I added a magnet and super glued it on the back side here. I'll show you in a second. And I have the opposite magnet that I put to the pouch. Now, this is great because it doesn't take up room in my actual pouch. And I don't have to worry about it falling off on the roof. It's very strong. I think it's a 45 pound magnet. And with a simple twist, it comes off. And so I'm right handed and I never use this side for marking boards. So I decided to put it on this side. And so basically when I put it back on the pouch, you just put it in the area and it sticks right away. It never comes off. So that's one thing I like. Um, you see the back side of that magnet, and it's just basically zip tied right there. But um, that's just something that can be bought at uh, local Princess Auto for two to three bucks in a little dab of super glue. And uh, it just kind of keeps it out of the way. And if I should ever fall on my side, I'm falling on the flat part. It always rests just like that. So that's kind of cool. I think uh, magnets are, I guess you would say underutilized in this job. Magnets are uh, very helpful on tapes and things of that nature. Okay, two of the tools that I enjoy using in terms of air. We have the, uh, the Max HN90F. It's a very good gun, very powerful, and uh, it's very light. Um, to the right, we have uh, the Hitachi NV-A3A2. This gun, I love this gun. Um, it's an amazing gun. It was featured in my very first Framing Beast video. That, uh, And I just want to let you know, this gun is still going today. And uh, it gets a lot of attention. But I want to show you a little difference between these two guns. And you start to notice the size difference when you put it side by side. So this gun, I believe, comes in at about five pounds. Very comparable to the average roofing nailer on the market today. This gun... I believe it comes closer to eight, eight and a half pounds. Now, you might not think that three pounds is a huge deal breaker difference, but the argument is that when you're using it all day, three pounds times however many shots, it starts to add up very quick. Either way, 
both great guns and uh, um, one downside of this gun is the system now I say that with respect but it's a it's a good thing and a bad thing because you for this gun to uh, to be used you need to use the high pressure system meaning the high pressure hose totally different coupling and uh, high pressure compressor so if one part of the system goes down then uh, it's basically unusable so that is a downfall and something to consider if you're looking at, at buying into the system made a lot of money with this nailer and uh, continues going strong so here is its brother another max tool super stapler now okay start off with a pro you will never find a faster stapler on the market today another pro this beautiful fitting it's made in such a way that it keeps the hose out of the way see how it redirects the coupling with the swivel that's a really cool thing that they've added another cool feature each gun comes with this beautiful hook you cannot beat that hook I'm telling you now for the downfall it's not the best built gun in terms of durability uh, Hitachi stapler will outlast it probably two to one and when it does go down good luck finding parts so guys when you're buying tools you have to always consider that eventually every tool will need maintenance and service and it's the most popular tools that have the quickest turnaround time it's for that reason that I stick to brands such as DeWalt, Passload, Hitachi because everybody services them this gun is the uh, call it beauty you know beauty and the beast and uh, it's been a great gun for me very sentimental I used this uh, when I was building in Jamaica doing some houses for a charity over there and uh, it was only this gun that they would let us take over because the pass low cordless had the fuel so they wouldn't let the fuel on the planes so that was kind of cool and uh, oh, so here is the pass load strip nailer classic nailer beautiful nailer um, the one change on this it's very obvious to see is the pass through magazine it's a huge benefit because it skips a step when you're loading the tool I think they shaved off uh, half a pound or a pound and they've kept the power framer teeth and that quick depth adjustment so no more taking out allen keys and it's just a really cool tool to use pass load have always been good when it comes to things like ergonomics and feel and weight and balance it was an amazing job when it comes to that so kudos to them when it comes to hangers this is the guy it's pretty hard to beat I got a few hanger nailers I got uh, new tools uh, the uh, their hanger nailer I think it goes up to two and a half inch when I'm nailing LVLs they want uh, two and a half inch hanger nails but uh, inch and a half this will shoot and um, I also have the Hitachi equivalent to this one here I'm sure you guys all know it's the 716 Hitachi stapler I added on this uh, air adjustment and uh, so if I need to make some fine adjustments if it's blowing it so the staples stay nice uh, in the plywood I don't have to go down to the compressor I can make any fine adjustments right here on the tool so that's kind of cool um, here's my helmet 
that I've used for the last maybe four or five months. There's a lot of writing on this helmet from if I'm sheeting alone, I just either pencil or write uh, measurements on the helmet so easy to remember. I was nervous when I first got the GoPro. So I uh, put a whole bunch of wood glue and epoxy on there, some PL. I didn't want it falling off 40 feet to the ground. It was $400 going down the drain. Another cool tool that I'm sure a lot of you have never seen is this tool right here. And it's called the wood ratchet. So this was an invention made by two guys in the States and uh, Basically, it can, it's used for when you're working alone. I was doing a bunch of houses a few years ago alone. And it helps with uh, bracing walls, bringing in braces. Basically, you tack this end in the floor plywood, and then you tack this end to the brace, and you start cranking. And depending on which side this is on whether you want to crank out or crank in. So it's a really neat tool. There's two holes that uh, you can throw some uh, some spikes in the joists or screws and a uh, really neat tool for uh, either taking the crown out of a joist or leveling walls. Um, so that's called the wood ratchet. So I'm willing to bet that not too many of you have seen this tool. Okay, moving on. Um, I want to quickly show you what I use uh, towards the end of houses when it comes to clean up. And uh, just basic checklist. I have this saved on my computer and I just print off a copy for every house. I'm just trying to get it down to a page, but that wasn't exactly possible. So basically I start up top and uh, we go through different stages and check them off as we go so nothing gets overlooked. Um, now I can either, if you guys want, I can send you this link to this, uh, this checklist or you can take half an hour and make one of your own. I'm sure that you there might be some things missing that apply to you or there might be some things on this list that might not apply based on your requirements and obligations to the builder you're working for but pretty standard stuff here make sure that everything's level squash blocks landings uh, mid blocks and bearing walls all material removed and um, yeah this is what we do for every house so just another thing that helps us kind of stay efficient and um, stay on top of our game because it's easy to forget even after you've been doing this for many years. Quickly I want to show you a purchase I just made on Amazon. Recently bought this uh, DeWalt 12 inch miter saw and compact miter saw station. Now, there are a few things I like about this, and then there's a couple things that I would tweak or try to improve. I'll start with what I do like. Um, DeWalt. So DeWalt's always going to have tons of power. This is no exception. Um, awesome to work with. And um, I will say this, though. Now this is going on to what I don't like about this. You see this right here? It's got that two-stage trigger that the older models don't have. Now, it only only will bug you for the first 20, 30 cuts, and then you get used to it. But it's basically a two-part trigger. Now, when all my skill saws for DeWalt, they have the cordless saws, they all have that safety. And basically, I don't know if you've noticed, but if you look closely, you'll see that I flush them out and put uh, epoxy and super glue. 
So basically it's like a normal skill saw. I feel that uh, the reason the companies put these safeties on saws are more based for homeowners and weekend warriors who not, might not be doing it every day. So that can become a liability on their end. So they just do that to just cover their butts. But if you're doing it all the time, it can just be a little bit bothersome just because you're not used to it. Um, I keep my tape right here on the bottom. Fits kind of nicely. Uh, this is just a really cool station that uh, can be useful for framers because of its compact size. This is the smaller version. Um, now surprisingly, I think this was about 40 or 50 bucks more than the standard size. But for what I need it for, I don't need to be making huge crown molding cuts. I need to be doing like um, crazy blocking or 22 and 3 8 blocks or angle blocks or hip blocks and uh, just things of that nature. So for what I need it for, it's great. Now for a standard build, I probably wouldn't take this to the job site and set it up. Although it is fairly quick and easy and it does have its benefits. But on jobs where I require a lot of blocking or multiple cuts, I would definitely take this because the 10 minutes it takes to set this up and get it going, will you, it will pay you back tenfold in both accuracy and production. You can literally cut, I'm gonna show you real quick. You can cut three two by fours cross cut, right, one shot. So right here, I have it measured at 22 and three eighths, and I just keep feeding, keep feeding, right? So can you imagine if you were doing like, I've done 10 blocks of townhouses, I wish I had this tool at that point. So I'm not keep marking every sample. This, if you can just imagine, this two by four fed over and over again. And whether it's the first block or the 200th block, it's the same shop quality each time. Now, I've heard from some people tell me that, well, why as a framer on a roof, does it matter if it's perfect or not when it comes to blocks? And I will argue this. The reason I use the calculator for things that blocks and hips and things of that nature and multiples is because I can easily step off a rafter and I can get it pretty good each time. But with that said, if I'm off an eighth of an inch on my length, so if it's a 612 common block and that's 25 and an eighth, long to short, and I just happen to make it 25 and a quarter, okay, well that's not gonna make a huge deal if there's two trusses, two step ups, right? So that, that, at that point, that's only a quarter inch off. But if I'm four trusses, now I'm looking at half inch off. If I'm eight trusses, now I'm an inch off. So it's called cumulative error where it's building errors on top of errors. So it makes a huge difference. On a, you, you notice it more on a bigger roofs than smaller roofs. It's the same reason why when I'm laying out walls, I don't bother to um, take the framing square and mark 16 and step it off that way. I use the tape and just start pulling straight 16s. Because if I step off on the framing square and I'm off an eighth here, an eighth there, I'm an eighth short, an eighth long, by the time I put my one time I go for sheeting and I put my fourth sheet and nothing's landing, it's all going to be frustration. So 
it's the uh, cumulative error that will bite you if you're not careful. So it's important to be accurate right from the beginning. And it has nothing to do with, with anything speed related, but it will definitely help you. Okay, I just uh, think that's about it. I will be posting a video tomorrow. Uh, I'm gonna be finishing the roof tomorrow and then uh, do all my cleanup work. My one guy is sick. He just called me this evening. So it will be just me and my main guy tomorrow. But uh, I'm not wanting to make excuses. And if I lose, I will honor my bet. First 10 people to call me out will get your mugs. And uh, so that's about it. Look forward to the next video. Look forward to your comments. Please, any suggestions, anything I can help you out on, let me know. Um, I'll continue posting um, any tips and tricks that I think can help you along the way. If there's something you want to see, let me know. Okay, YouTube, take care. Have a good night. Bye.